Once again, I'd really like to thank the Movement Watch Company for sponsoring yet another video. Just about every month they're sponsoring a video like Clockwork, and without them, I couldn't have a lot of these keys here on the counter around these beautiful watches, along with the cars that they start. And I'm really into their latest Sin Nudes edition of the Voyager model. The nude edition consists of a skin tone band. Sadly, my skin tone isn't nearly as good as this skin tone. Also, a gold dial with orange hands, which looks really sharp, and they have it in the Voyager model and several other styles. Additionally, Movement does gift boxes for the holidays. Totally easy, great way to give a gift to someone or treat yourself. And there's tons and tons of other options that you can check out for yourself. Go to MVMT.com, link below. They have generous discounts going on right now for the holidays. And this is the kind of company that you really should support, not only because they support YouTubers and podcasters and lots of other small businesses, but also because of the company's history. It was started by two guys who dropped out of college with dreams of starting a watch company. And they've been so successful that they've sold over a million watches now in 160 countries. MVMT.com. These are great watches, super stylish. I get compliments every time I put them on. So join me and join the movement. Now, back to cars. It's cold out there. Now, a lot of you know that I filmed a reality show earlier this year where I bought 22 cars over the course of five months. Now, I've sold off for buried the bulk of them, and now only three remain, and that includes my 1995 Dodge Viper, which you saw already doing that head gasket job. It's almost finished. I'll be driving it soon. I also kept this 1994 Jeep Wrangler that someone modified to look like a Jurassic Park Jeep. It is totally awesome. Both of those cars are childhood dreams come true to own, but neither of them are my favorite. My favorite is actually this 1984 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. And I personally think Jeep, the Chrysler Corporation, was totally insane for killing these off in 1991. Or, or were they? Now, my Jeep's actually the first year of the Grand Wagoneer, and it was still owned at the time by AMC. It had not become a part of Chrysler yet. And I personally prefer these earlier versions of Grand Wagoneers. They're mostly the same on the outside, but all of the differences are inside. And oh, is it nice. Gotta get that heat going. And I'm sorry about the lighting level. Here's a little rant, especially for YouTubers. Daylight savings time is just miserable for us, especially if you have a day job. It gets dark at 4.30 in Kansas, thanks to daylight savings time, so that's why it's getting dark already. But, wagon here is great. Back to being different. The older ones, this 1984, I like these older Grand Wagoneers better than the newer Chrysler versions because it has the old style gauges. It's not a bunch of plastic fantastic. It, these gauges look like they're right out of the 1950s. It also has the old school metal glove box in the middle, which is super cool. Same with the old radio. The knobs, you have a separate control for your heater, and then the air conditioner has its own blower underneath. It's, it's a lot more classic. I feel like I'm driving a car from a totally different era, while the newer ones, which are more valuable for some reason, they, they tried to modernize them and I mean it's still cool but it, it doesn't work in my opinion. Now one thing that they all have in common from 1984 to 1991 and really the ones that go back to the 60s is this ride. The ride and comfort is unbelievable. I put it somewhere between my Buick Park Avenue and my Rolls Royce Phantom in a good way. It's just that smooth. It's it's crazy that this is an SUV, a solid axle four-wheel drive, because it is just so smooth and comfortable and, and quiet. I can hear the engine a little bit, but when I kind of cruise, even with the old window seals, this thing's like 34 years old and has almost 200,000 miles on it, and I still whisper quiet in here. It's so nice, and it's held together really well. I know these things rust, and this one does have a little bit of rust, but almost 200,000 miles. It's on the original engine. I have service records dating back from to 1985, and there aren't any serious issues. One transmission rebuild and then a lot of maintenance, but overall this thing has just triumphed over time. It really is crazy that 
They quit making these things in 1991 and replaced them with the Grand Cherokee. And it's a little short-sighted when you think about it because the SUV craze really came into play and this thing modernized would have been a huge hit. But if Chrysler had done it at the time, they, they just most certainly would have ruined it, completely ruined the Wagoneer. This thing was a total dinosaur by 1991. It was the last American car to still have a carbureted V8 in it in 1991. And that was <laughs> really something. So let's talk about the Chrysler Corporation and Jeep after this. When the Wagoneer went away, they still had the Cherokee, of course, which was designed by AMC, it came out in 1984, the same year as this, I think. And they quit making that in 2001 and replaced it with the Jeep Liberty, which was an awful, awful SUV. I would suspect that there's more old Cherokee still on the road today than those Liberties. Probably not, but in a few years, that'll probably be the case because they just weren't in the same league of build quality as the old Cherokees, those Liberties, the transmissions, the, everything. They were, they were a nightmare for a used car dealer to buy. And then even the Grand Cherokee, the first generation, was pretty good, but each successive generation kind of took it down a step, in my opinion. Even the Wrangler, of course, the Wrangler, they didn't mess with too much, but after 2006, when they went with the newer, wider one, and it needed to be wider and safer, obviously, they put a minivan engine in it. and <laughs> Almost ruined that, but they, they, they fixed that with a better engine a few years in. Now, if the Grand Wagoneer had survived in all this, it probably would have resembled something like the Jeep Commander. And the Jeep Commander was another nightmare of Chrysler quality of that time. And then there was the Patriot. Yeah, the Patriot, we all know, that car could barely clear a parking curb. I can't believe they even called it a Jeep. So really, the Wagoneer dying was probably the best thing for it, for its legacy, because if the Wagoneer had continued, that name just would have been totally tarnished. And now these things are ridiculous collector vehicles. I actually bought one of these, a Mint 1989, 10 years ago for only $4,500. It had 80,000 miles on it. That thing would easily be worth $30,000, $40,000 now, which, which is insane. I had to pay more for this old 200,000 mile version, the less desirable 84, thousands more than the one I bought 10 years ago that, that was mint. Of course, Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep have come a long way since their dark ages of the late 90s and the 2000s. Personally, I like what Fiat's been doing with Chrysler. I love the little bitty Jeep Renegade, and they've announced that they're going to start building the Grand Wagoneer again for maybe the 2021 model year. And once again, it's going to be a Range Rover competitor. And apparently, it's gonna have a price tag to match the really expensive Range Rover as well. Now they're gonna do this right, or at least I hope, and put it on the full-size Ram chassis. And a six-figure Wagoneer may sound insane, but if you think about it, how collectible these have become, there's certainly a demand. Mint condition examples of this Wagoneer, well, the final versions, the 1991s at least, they can bring $50,000 or more. A 1991 SUV, it's totally nuts, but these things have sort of re-emerged as status symbols for people wanting to look like old money. And I bet if they brought this back into production, it'd take a huge chunk out of the really successful Range Rover and more recently, Lincoln Navigator sales. I mean. I'd definitely buy a new SUV with wood paneling. Faux show. As for my Grand Wagoneer and what I'm gonna do with it, given it's not the very desirable last model years, it's not worth all that much. It also has almost 200,000 miles on it, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but when I got it, I thought I was going to fix everything, restore it, make it beautiful showroom once again. But now that I've had it for a while, I really like the character, the patina but I still do need to fix some things. It has some rust back in the rear quarters like they always do and some loose wood and a few other little odds and ends, but I think I'm just gonna fix those and enjoy the car with the faded paint and the kind of ratty wood and, and, and just, just take it as is because it's so, so pretty. Really, the only annoying thing about driving this car around is I stop for gas or something. You stop for gas a lot. That's, that's not that annoying, that's just given, but people wanna buy it from me. They just It's the only car where I park it and people ask how much and really, really want this car. It's, I ain't selling it, at least not yet. So thank you for watching. It's cold.